Miss MC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. I've got one. Good. I got a book. Gomer, are you sure you don't know any other game? I know how to play Old Maid, but you have to have special cards for that. You need the rabbits and the firemen. Play, Gomer. Fish, fish, got any nines? Fish. Fish. Fish, fish, I got my wish. Boy, what a way to spend a free Saturday. You know what I wish? I wish I had $10. You know where I'd be? Where's that, Duke? I'd be at that big crap game in town. It's been going on for a couple of days now, and there's more money changing hands than you've ever seen. Yeah, I heard Sergeant Crabtree over in Company A won himself over 200 bucks. 200? I heard it was 300. 300 dollars? Golly. Fish, fish, you got any jacks? Pile? It's pile in here? I'm right here. You got a visitor down the rec hall. A visitor? Male or female? Female. Female? Hey, what's this, Gomer? You've been holding out on us? She blonde or brunette? Gray. It's his grandmother. My grandma? You mean Grandma Pyle's here? Good gracious alive. Gomer, Gomer Pyle. <laughs> it's you. It's really you. Well, I hadn't seen you since before I left for the Marine Corps. That's right. Over a year, you left exactly a week before Vita Mae Devereaux had her last spell. Poor thing. Yes, I'm sure sorry to hear about that. Well, she was getting on. But do you want to hear something funny? Vita Mae had a sister in Fort Lauderdale who died of the very same thing. Isn't that funny? Yes, ma'am, that's funny, all right. But tell me, Grandma, what are you doing here? You never did write and tell me you was coming. Won't we come over here and sit down? I wanted to surprise you. I want a trip, Gomer. Up to visit Eunice in Stockton. Eunice? Your cousin Eunice, on the Beasley side, married that fella with the funny eye. <laughs> well, she wrote off for me to come up, and I thought, shoot, why not? And while I'm going, I'll kill two birds with one rock and stop off to see you. Well, I sure am glad you did, Grandma. I'm just delighted to see you. Go, my stand up, and let me look at you. Oh. My, my, how they've stretched you out. <laughs> you look awfully thin, Gomer. Oh, but I'm solid, Grandma. Uh, I don't know. You look pretty thin to me. You know what can happen. You can get thin and run down. It could lead to the rickets. Oh, Grandma, nobody in the Marine Corps gets rickets. You... Well, you won't get them while I'm here. Huh? Listen, Gomer, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You go wash your face and brush your hair, and I'm going to take you back to the hotel and buy you a nice big chicken dinner. How does that sound to you? You're free to leave, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, and I sure would like to visit with you, but I don't think I could eat a chicken dinner. I just ate lunch about an hour ago. So what? You can eat again. Anybody flirting with the Ricketts has to eat often. <laughs> you know what you can get from Ricketts, don't you? Bow legs. Oh, you want bow legs? No, ma'am. Well, go on then and get cleaned up. Mm. You didn't finish. You didn't finish. Yes, I did, Grandma. I'm full. If you don't finish it, they take it back in the kitchen and make a high shot of it. I just can't, Grandma. All right. You always did look out after me, though, didn't you? I didn't want you to get the rickets. You remember when I used to come by your house after school and you'd give me fresh milk and spinach cookies and then you'd tell my fortune with the cards? Yes, we had some nice times, Gomer. Sure wish you had your cards with you now. What makes you think I don't? You mean you do? Right here in my purse. Well, I'll be. You want me to tell your fortune now, Sonny? Well, golly, be just like old times. <laughs> All right. What's that? Oh, well, that's just some slippery elm for gum trouble. <laughs> and, um, possum hair for the joint. <laughs> oh, here they are. I ain't been using these much lately, since so many of the young folks moved away. It's mostly young folks like to have their fortunes told. God, if I had some milk and some spinach cookies, why, it'd be just like old times. All right, here we go. Now. Keep your eye on the jack of spades, Gomer. That's you. Well, didn't I used to be the jack of clubs? Did you? OK, then. Keep your eye on the jack of clubs. <laughs> uh -huh. 
That's a good sign. Oh, yes, indeedy. What is it? A nine followed by a five and a two. What's that name? That's 17, a lucky sign. But ain't nine and five and two 16? 16 or 17, they're both lucky. <laughs> See, they're in the favored circle. Anything from 15 to 18, especially if you're Jack of Diamonds. But I'm Jack of Clubs. Or Jack of Clubs. <laughs> oh, my. Huh? Maybe I better do this one over, Goma. They didn't come out right this time. Well, wait, Grandma. Does it say something bad? Tell me. I'll deal them over, Goma. No, no. If something bad's gonna happen, you better tell me. It's best that I know. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe you should know. But I don't know if it'll do any good. What is it? Gomer, something bad is going to happen to somebody close to you. Someone near and dear to your heart. Oh, no. Hope nothing's gonna happen to you, Grandma. Oh, it probably won't be me, Gomer. I'm pretty well protected by my charms. <laughs> it's somebody else close to you. Who else is close to you? Somebody here in the Marine Corps? Well, there's Sergeant Carter. Gosh, I hope it's not Sergeant Carter. Well, I don't say who it is, but that isn't the worst of it. It's not? No. The worst of it is, whatever's gonna happen to your friend is gonna be your fault. My fault? What is this? A barracks or a pig pen? It's really hard to tell. I see Marines, but then again, it might be just pigs in Marine uniforms. Did I hear anyone say oink? Did you say oink, Miller? Did you say oink, Dobrowski? Huh? All right, I'll give you guys exactly 15 minutes. What's this? Come on, who left their shoe out in the middle of the deck? Could be mine, Sergeant. What size is it? What size is it? Pile when? When are you gonna get your head out of a locker and shape up and be a Marine? I've been lenient with you, pile. I've been very lenient. But I'm only human. I'm not made out of steel. When you joined the Marines, you came in a knucklehead, and you've been going downhill ever since. I've had it with you, pile. Do you know what I'm gonna have to do, you knucklehead? What's wrong, Sarge? I can't talk. I've lost my voice. What? Do you guys realize what's happened? The Sarge lost his voice. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know who made him lose his voice? Yeah, hey, Gomer, nice work. The Sergeant lost his voice, and it's all due to you. Oh, my, oh, my. Grandma Pyle told me something like this gonna happen, and it did, just like a card said. What? Nothing. Oh, my, good gracious. Hmm. What is it, Doc? Well, it's not too serious, Sergeant. You've, uh... Stranger vocal cords. What have you been doing, Sergeant? Uh, screaming a lot lately? <laughs> Why do you do that, Sergeant? I thought after boot camp you cut down on your yelling. I, I got this knucklehead that's... Uh, 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 don't try to use your voice. You've overdone that already. Now, there's only one thing that's going to cure this. That's complete rest for 24 hours. <laughs> Sergeant, I don't want you to say one single word until tomorrow. No talking, no whispering, nothing. Is that clear? Good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. But Nothing. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, he's here, but he can't talk. And uh, no, sir, those are doctor's orders. Sergeant Carter strained his vocal cords. Yes, sir, yelling at a private. <laughs> He'll be taken care of, sir. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. That was Lieutenant Bradshaw. He said you ought to learn to talk softly and carry a big stick. And gargle a lot. Hello, Sergeant Carter. May I come in again? I just wanted to tell you that I sure am sorry about what happened. I know it's all my fault, but I just wanted to say if there is anything at all I can do to ease your discomfort, just don't hesitate to ask me. Get out before I kill you. <laughs> Sergeant Carter? Ow! But, Sergeant? Ow! 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 And then his face got all red, and he couldn't talk. And it was all my fault, because it was my shoe that he got mad at. 
Well, the cards told you. Remember how the cards told you? Yes, ma'am, and I just feel terrible, though, because he had such a fine and clear voice. Why, when he'd call my name, you could hear him clear from one end of the base to the other. <laughs> oh, it held together. Want to see who you're going to marry, Gomer? Well, you <laughs> Looks like a Q. Oh, no, that's a no. I don't know any girl whose name begins with O. Oh, you will. Peeling on the floor and those who you adore. Right, Grandma. But what am I going to do about Sergeant Carter? I've just got to do something to help that poor fella. Well, don't you worry, Gomer. I got something right here that'll fix him up. <laughs> Calibus root, good for indigestion. <laughs> See, now, oh, here it is. Yes, this ought to do it. What is it? My own mixture. Alum, molasses, and vinegar. It's really good, huh? Good. Wendell Kiefer took this all the years he sang in the church choir. You remember Wendell. He always had a bottle in his back pocket. <laughs> OK, I'll see if I can't get him to take some. Oh, sure, that'll do it. Just get one spoonful into him, and it'll make him feel as good as new. Thank you, Grandma. I'll do that. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> Rotten. <laughs> Corporal Ball, is Sergeant Carter around this morning? No, he's in his bunk taking it easy. Doctor's orders. What do you want? Well, can he talk yet? No, not a word. Then I wonder if you'd do me a favor, Corporal. Would you give this medicine to Sergeant Carter and ask him to take a spoonful of it? Well, what is it? Well, it's the remedy my grandma gave me. She's practically a miracle worker when it comes to things like this, and she said it'd fix the sergeant right up. Well, are you kidding? Sergeant Carter wouldn't take any home remedies, especially if it came from you. What's that? He's banging his shoe. Three bangs. He wants his coffee. But this would do him so much good. Maybe you could convince him. Forget it, Pyle. He wouldn't take any of your grandmother's medicines, and I wouldn't suggest it for a million dollars. But back home, Grandma Pyle's practically a doctor. Forget it. Mm. No cream. Pyle, are you still here? I was just going. Good. Well, give Sergeant Carter my best and tell him the love of the whole platoon is with him. Here's your coffee, Sarge. I'll get it. Hello, Sergeant Carter's office, B Company, Corporal Boyle speaking. I'm sorry, Sergeant Carter isn't able to talk to anyone this morning. Well, that's all right, Corporal. This is Commander Snyder. I'm calling to have him test his voice. Put him on, will you please? Oh, yes, sir, Commander. Hey, Sarge, doctor's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. He'll be here in a second, sir. <laughs> here he is now, sir. Sergeant Carter, it's been 24 hours since you've used your voice, and I think you ought to try it. Now, don't raise your voice at all. Just take it easy and speak to me. Hello, doctor. Doctor? 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 Doc? 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 Huh. I've never seen anything like this before. Your whole throat seems to have puckered up like an apricot. Oh, it's nothing serious, Sergeant. It's probably just something you ate or drank. As a matter of fact, the strain is entirely gone, oddly enough. And your voice is back. I see no reason why you can't go back to work. Back to work? With this voice? The men would laugh their heads off. Yes, I see what you mean. Well, then, just continue to take it easy. In a day or so, it'll return to normal. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Of course, if it doesn't, you can always join the Vienna Boys Choir. <laughs> well, he's in sick pay. That's all I can tell you. Maybe he's getting his throat sprayed. Well, is it all right if I wait here for him? I want to find out what the doctor say yet. Hey, Sergeant. We was just talking about you. <laughs> but I want to find out what the doctor say yet. 
pile. I think you better go. Well, all right. But first, can you tell me if you can talk? You mean you can? Well, I thought sure you'd be able to after you had some of Grandma's remedy. What? <laughs> well, what are you talking about, Pyle? What does that mean? After he took some of Grandma's remedy. Well, it didn't work, so there ain't no point in talking about it. <laughs> well, come on, Pyle. Let's hear it. Corporal Boyle said that you wouldn't take it willingly, so I took the liberty of slipping a little in your coffee this morning. Did you notice that your coffee tasted a little funny? Well. Well, it wasn't nothing harmful. It was just some vinegar and alum and molasses. You put that stuff in my coffee? Please, please. It's back. He got his voice back. It's back. You let him bring. You numbs go. Ow, 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 ow. You see, Gomer, I told you his voice would come back. But his voice sure is high, Grandma. Why is it so high? How high is it? Well, it's not even like a talking voice. It's more like a singing voice. You remember little Rosemary Pickett back home when she'd heard herself? Well, it's kind of like that. It's like Wendell Kiefer. He had a beautiful voice after one good dose. In fact, some folks thought he sounded like a boy soprano. That's what they said. He sounded like a 56-year-old boy soprano. Well, the sergeant sure is high. Well, that's right. That's the way it's supposed to be. Later on, it'll come down. Well, high or low, it sure is good to hear his voice again, and it's all because of you. Oh, it's nothing, Gomer, nothing. Had you finished with your tea, Gomer? Yes, ma'am, and it sure was good. Thank you. I guess I better be getting back to the base now. Oh, Gomer, wait a minute. What's the matter? Your tea leaves, the way they're arranged. You can stay here, Gomer. You can't leave this room. What's wrong? There's danger lurking. There's danger for anyone who's Taurus the bull. And you're Taurus, ain't you, April the 26th? No, ma'am, not me, Grandma. My birthday's February 26th. Pisces. Thank goodness. Because these leaves tell there's terrible danger today for anyone who's Taurus the Bull. You know anyone who's Taurus the Bull? Anyone born in May? Well, there's my sergeant. Sergeant Carter, he was born May 4th. May 4th? Gomer, are you sure? Yes, ma'am. Why? Sergeant Carter is the Bull. <laughs> really? He's Taurus the Bull? He's as Taurus as you can get. Holy. Gomer. You better warn him. Tell him to stay right where he is, because if he don't... Sarge, we gotta find some place for you to relax. Now, you need... Hey, I got a great idea. Why don't you go to that crap game in town, huh? Did you hear about that, Vince? Sergeant Crabtree won over 400 bucks. You want me to bet with this voice? You want me to say, shoot, I got you faded? Come on, little Joe from Kokomo. With this voice, they'll laugh me out of there. Vince, all you have to do is shake the dice and throw your money out. Vince, you need something to take your mind off things. Hey, maybe you'll win a potful besides. Wouldn't that be something? Without saying a word, you come home the big winner? What do you say? Come on, it'll do you good. Win or lose, it'll do you good. boy, Sarge. Go get dressed and go. Anybody ask any questions, tell him he got laryngitis and can't talk. Yeah, yeah. Good, Sarge, good. Corporal Ball, is Sergeant Carter here? I got to see him right away. Well, he better not see you, Pyle. He'll break you right in half after what you did to him this morning. But where is he? Is he here? Pyle, you want to stay alive? Keep away from him. But where is he? What's he doing? He's getting cleaned up, okay? What for? Why is he getting cleaned up? Because he's going into town, Pyle, if that's all right with you. Oh, no, he is? But he can't do that yet. Pyle, you better get out of here. If he sees you, he's going to blow a fuse. Oh, my. Sarge. But don't worry about the crap game. It'll be waiting for you. 
They've been playing for three days. Boy, oh! Yeah? What is it, Sarge? My pants! Did you take my pants? No! Why would I take your pants? Well, what am I gonna do now? Well, why don't you just wear a uniform? My uniform? To go to a crap game? Oh, yeah. I tell you what, Sarge. Borrow a pair of mine. A pair of yours? <laughs> All set, huh, Sarge? That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> Just go into town and don't worry about a thing. Who's gonna see your pants under a craft table? Yeah, swell. <laughs> what I'm doing with this carburetor in my hand, Sergeant. But I can explain everything. You do that, pile. You explain, and then I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I've done it for you. You see, you're Taurus the Bull, and my grandma says you got to stay put or something terrible's gonna happen to you. What? So I couldn't let you go into town. You? Uh-huh. I flattened your tar. I took your pants. Anything to keep you from going into town on account of your Taurus, and if you did something terrible, what's gonna happen? You see, it's a bad traveling day for your sign. Are you finished, pile? Fine, because now it's my turn, and I'm gonna... Sergeant Carter! Vince! Hey, Vince! Hey, you didn't leave yet. It's a good thing. Boy, are you lucky. Why? I just got a call from Corporal Wood. That crap came in town, it was raided. What? Yeah, about a dozen cops came in and hauled everybody off to jail. Booked them all on gambling. Boy, if you'd have gone in when you started out, you'd have been picked up, too. It's a good thing all those things happen to hold you up. But you were the one who... Yep, it was me, all right. But how did you know? Because you're Taurus the Bull, like I told you. Holy smoke! That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. How about that? He knows I'm headed for trouble and... <laughs> hey, Sarge, your voice. It's back. It's back. Yeah. How about that? That Grandma Pa, she's a marvel, an absolute marvel. <laughs> Well, it sure is a pleasure meeting you, Grandma Pyle. Thank you. I don't mind telling you, you practically saved my life. I'm happy it worked out the way it did. I know Gomer thinks a lot of you. He was sure anxious to protect you. Sergeant Carter told me he used to never believe in things like fortune telling and good luck charms. But you sure changed your mind now, hadn't you, Sergeant? Well, what can I say? Look what it did for me. Well, I'm going to be leaving this afternoon. So I just wanted you boys to have these. What's that? Hawk's toes. <laughs> Wear these around your neck. And you don't ever have to worry about having neuralgia, arthritis, pleurisy, influenza, or the grip. Hawk's toes? Here's one for you, Homer. Well, thank you, Grandma. And here's one for you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. What's wrong? I think I threw my back out. What about the hawk's toes, Grandma? Well, that's the only thing it doesn't cover, a thrown out back. <laughs> now, let's see what else I have here. 